So, I'll be at the boat landing near the palace, waiting for Regis there. Mind telling him? You've met with Oriana. How did it go? Not well. Oh. Did she not divulge where you might find the Unseen? No, she did. Also divulged her hunger for the blood of small children. Well, I admit I'd heard rumors, but... preferred to lend them no credence. Rather not talk about it. Caves west of town, other side of the lake. That's where we need to go. I see. Well, I'm prepared to set out at any time, but... Yeah, I know. You'd still prefer to free Sienna, for Dedloff's sake. For the sake of you both. Oh, please. Orphanage, what happened there? His fault, plain and simple. City gutters are overflowing with blood, that's his doing too. And you're worried somebody might have hurt his feelings? To meet the Unseen Elder is to face mortal danger. I've said so all along and never in jest. You are a friend, a dear friend. I'd rather you not risk your neck unnecessarily. I think it's natural, I think it's obvious. Obviously natural. Especially when we have an alternative. An entirely reasonable one. <sighs> You've worn me down, Regis. Fine, have it your way. Playroom. Let's go. Excellent decision. Time will tell. fight with his door. Do you mind? Not at all. Service. We'll search for this chatting bell, please. Hmm. Utter silence. No one here. We should look around at least. Something inside? Nope. Empty. Sure. A tin knight. Miniature tableware and plush toys. Cute. Wooden duck. Somebody broke its wings off. Nice tune. 
Indeed, pleasant. It's a shame the mechanism is damaged. What the? Found a notebook. Property of Isabel de Roquefort, court governess. The notes of Siana and Anna Henrietta's governess when they were little. I'm not sure it will help, but I suppose there's no harm in leafing through them. Siana gave me a drawing today. Charming. Of freshly decapitated bodies covered in blood. Perhaps not so much. I asked her why ever she would draw such a thing. Her Highness claimed it was a rendering of nightmares which have plagued her for as long as she can remember. Siana does wake up screaming nearly every night, save when she shares a bed with Honorietta. Curse of the Black Sun. Supposedly girls afflicted by it had horrible dreams. Kind of horrible that made some of them go mad. The girls quarreled today. I must note rather sadly they did not behave as befits future ladies. The incident devolved into fisticuffs. Anna Henrietta was first to strike her sister. Siana gave back as good as she'd gotten. By the time I separated them, Anna Rieta had lost two teeth. She ran off to complain to her parents. His Grace the Duke refused to believe my version of events. He laid all the blame on Siana and vowed to punish the little one harshly. Anna Rieta did her best to have her sister's sentence commuted, but the Duke and Duchess proved unbending. Once you're labeled a black sheep, it's so hard to shed that reputation. Today I accompanied the girls for the first time to the land of a thousand fables. We spent half the day there. First we played with Thumbelina, then with Barbarossa, who proved quite the charmer for a brigand and pirate. I'm beginning to suspect Isabel de Roquefort wrote in her diary after taking a powerful hallucinogenic. Cannabis rudelaris, for instance, or... Shh, don't interrupt. I tip my cap to Master Artorius Figo for his achievement. He has proved he has no equal in the arcane arts. Wait, Artorius was the court mage here, a specialist in illusions, which means... Regis, last warning. Stop interrupting or I'll seat you in the corner. The girls told me, if I ever wish to visit alone, I need but crack open the land of a thousand fables and utter out loud the incantation, Expecto Ludum. A book as the key to an illusion. My, my, this grows more interesting by the minute. Mages sent by the Conclave arrived today. They came to examine Siana. I cannot know what conclusions they drew, but His Grace now seems clearly upset. Hmm. Curse of the Black Sun. There's no doubt, then, that she was diagnosed with the syndrome symptoms. Or had that label planted on her. It goes on. I dared ask the Duke what would become of the girl. He did not reply. I tutored the girls in Nilfgaardian today. Siana applies herself so, though she has great difficulty memorizing new vocabulary. Lady Anna Rieta seems more gifted in this regard, yet also prone to impish behavior. When she thought me out of earshot, she called me a blood accuser. She and Siana laughed so hard they almost choked. Hmm. Blood is damned. Or cursed. What's Kusa? In the melodious tongue of our non-too-friendly neighbors to the south, the word describes the many-petaled flower that blooms in that place we so unmelodiously call the crotch. Mm. Realize this might sound improbable, but maybe, just maybe, Anna Henrietta tossed Siana into that illusion. Not impossible. She would be safe there, and isolated. We must see. Where's that book? Nothing under the carpet. Did you expect something? Apart from the dust swept under there by a lazy chambermaid. Wooden duck. Somebody broke its wings off. Nice tune. Indeed, pleasant. It's a shame the mechanism is damaged.
this it? Let's see. Expecto Ludum. Regis? Regis! Land of a thousand fables. Incredible. Hmm. Let's see where this road takes me. going wild. All land's an illusion. It's so powerful there's no way to dispel it. Bloody hell, mm. let him out! Voices. He gobbled up my gingerbread! Now it's my turn to gobble him! <laughs> Then you open it. Now, who's this? A lost traveler? You're not supposed to be here, sweetie. Why, you're old. Old and pale. But never worry. A bit of butter, a bit of spice. And you'll make a tasty morsel. as soon as I catch you.
Wicked witch. You've heard of her, haven't you? Now, where did you put that key? Listen, I. How do you come by a weapon? It's Prince Charming's. He no longer needs it. Here it is. <coughs> Thank you. She'd have begged me for certain if you'd not. Is that you? It's been years, Jack. H have you come to play? No, I just want your beans, so you can breathe easy. Beans? What beans? <clears throat> Try not to interrupt. Well, Jack, where are they? Sienna, I, I, I'm sorry, but, but I haven't got them. Something tells me you're lying. Perhaps you wish to play the old games after all, hmm? This little picky went to market. This little picky went home. For instance. I'm telling the truth. I swear it. Anarieta, she ordered them buried all over so you wouldn't be able to leave. Where? I... I don't know. But... but Joss, the boy with the thing for wolves, he should know. He sticks his nose in everyone's affairs. He had better know, because if not, I'll find you and we'll have ourselves a little talk. Understand? Now shoo. Ah, all right. So why is it you're here? Searching for my lost childhood. Wound up at Care More and his little boy. Don't quite remember how. Never had any toys. Never played any games. What do you think? Why might I be here? It's Deadloff. He's trying to force Anna Henrietta's hand. Wants her to release you. Summoned monsters to attack Beauclair. Sounds like Deadloff, all right. But I doubt you came all this way just to bring me up to speed on current events. So get to the point, please. Isn't it obvious? Offering to be your ally. We both want you out of here. You because you want your freedom back. Me because as soon as you meet with Deadloff, he'll put an end to the chaos in the city. You exposed me. I landed in prison because of you. Now you come to beg my help, I dare say. My life is full of surprises, isn't it? But normally I'd tell you to sod off. But, from what you say... Folk are dying who have nothing to do with this. Not part of the plan. Deadloff was only to kill those who deserved it. No one else. Fine, Witcher. I accept your offer. Consider us allies. Shake on it. This place... Tell me something more. It's an illusion, right? Yes. Created by Arturius Vigo. Anna, Henrietta, and I would come here to play out scenes from our favorite fables. Which didn't seem like she was playing. Magical entropy. Without maintenance, the spell gradually disintegrates over time. It grows wild. Your sister chose a dangerous place for your prison. It's deceptive. Provided I don't provoke them, the fairy tale characters don't attack me. But you... You don't belong here, so you had best be on your watch. Since you brought it up, the knights Detloff killed. What exactly did they do to you? Crespi, Duak, Lacroix, Peyrek Perrin? Not a memory I enjoy revisiting, but... I suppose you deserve to know. When my parents disowned me... They ordered those very knights to escort me beyond the duchy's borders. All did so without uttering a single word in my defense. Like you said, they had their orders. Mm-hmm. But Crespi was not ordered to beat me unconscious with a horsewhip after my first attempt at escape. And Ulaik had no instructions to deny me food and abuse me. I learned something then. Knights are not so chivalrous when no one's watching. 
That explains a lot. Shocked, aren't you? You must have thought you had me pegged. Before bothering to hear my side. Everyone does that. Curse of the Black Sun. That's why you were banished, right? Mm-hmm. Twisted princesses, mutants. I'm certain you've heard of us. Even met one of you. Renfrey of Craden. And? Was she truly monstrous? She was cruel, that's certain. But what caused it? The curse or what she went through? Asking myself to this day. You killed her, didn't you? Had no choice. Funny. Mum said the same when she tossed me out of the house. So, what's with the beams? Mind explaining? Hmm, certainly. That you must gird yourself with patience. There are two ways out of this land. My darling sister blocked one when she tossed me in here. The other's up there, in the clouds. She made it hard, but not impossible to access by concealing the beams. Still don't understand. Don't fret, just listen. That boy, that was Jack, of Beanstalk fame. You know the tale? Jack climbed a gigantic beanstalk to a giant's castle, high up in the clouds. As we shall do if we can just find those blasted beans. There are three. One red, one blue, one yellow. Huh. Stock won't sprout from just one? No, because it must transpire exactly as it did in the tale. Clear now? So we must find Joss. Perhaps he will be able to help us. You lead. Joss can usually be found wandering the glade at the foot of the mount. It's some distance from here, past the witch's house to the right. So, what exactly is happening in the city? Bloodshed. A massacre. Which is why we gotta hurry. You needn't fret. Time flows differently in the Fable Sphere. We can stay here a week, yet outside mere minutes will have passed. from intruders, meaning you. Oh, unicorns! We must catch them. We won't have to walk everywhere then. I call the pink one. Isn't it? Reminds me of my childhood. Reminds me of something altogether different. Care to elaborate? Rather not. Joss! Last! 
they're going to rip them in six. Relax, it's over. No, it's not. There's more. Another wolf behind you. Ignore him. He always lies. Aha. Boy who cried wolf. Still does, I suppose. And doesn't, when they actually appear. The one and only. Listen, you little chit. Jack said you know what's become of his three beans. I don't know anything! Not one thing, and besides, watch out! Wolves! This will be interesting. Right, let's get to it. Let's say for a minute you know what happened to the red bean. Where wouldn't it be? For certain, no one swallowed it. Oh no, definitely not that. Of course not. But say someone didn't. Who would it be that didn't swallow it? A human. The most human human in the land of a thousand fables. Everyone! Wolves! Run! Bet you haven't heard what happened to the blue bean. Maybe? Not at all? Right? I've heard it lies about somewhere, out in the open. Just like that? No one guarding it? Nobody! Three times over! Help! Wolves! Yellow bean. Don't know a thing about it, right? Somewhere very, and I mean very deep. So deep, in fact, it's completely underground. And who has it, hmm? A bold farmhand, who in no way and not at all awaits someone. Not in the slightest. Good folk! Wolf! Say that word one more time and I'll chop you up. Feed you to the fishes. Understood? All right, we should go. Watch out for wolves! Tough to talk to, that one. Was it, though? You need merely remember he always lies. Or more precisely, reverses the truth. Mm hmm. Where to now? I'm not sure. We should visit some of the other fables. The meaty ones, that is. Perhaps then Joss's hints will make more sense. It's just a few. Red Riding Hood, Piglets and Bears, three of each, and Goldilocks, of course. Then Long Locks, and a little lass who sells flint. Ah, fine. Let's get to work. Incredible. You must have loved this place. I did at first. But children get bored quickly. Even tea parties with a whole cackle of princesses eventually turn dull and routine. What did you do then? Dropped a duck egg in the swan's nest once, that sort of thing. Stunning Stole the pee out from My the princess. He sleeps to this stunning. day, I think. My oh look! Attire. The Emperor of Nilfgaard! He's come out to show off his new robe! Coming down the mountain! Come on! Faster! Come on, you... you... Know what? They need names! I'll call mine... Hmm... Anise. Call mine Roach. Roach? Are you serious? Ugh. Slower.
What now, you piece of filth? the beans. Concern yourself with that. A true witcher should never abandon poultry in distress. Care for a cigarillo? A bit of tobacco? A dab of fist tech? Uh, remind me, what tale are you from? Sold to flints when I was a lass. But no one bought them, so I branched out. Now I deal in snuffs, puffs, all sorts of fun things. What'll you have, sweeties? Magic beans. Do you have any? If it's not the new name of some kicker I already have, dearies, then no. But maybe you'd like some. Hey, where'd you get that ribbon? That's mine. Is that so? Then why was it lying in the bushes? Find us keepers, sweetheart. The ribbon. Mind explaining what the fuss is about? There's not much to explain. I got it from a Turius Vigo when I was a child. It was to protect me from evil. It clearly didn't work, given how I ended up. But it means a lot to you. How should I put this? I have so few mementos from my childhood, and the Ripon reminds me of the good old days, when I was someone else. Dears, could you continue this touching scene elsewhere, hmm? You're scaring away my customers. Give Sienna the ribbon. Why not, huh? Sugar plum. The only thing I hand out for free is a first hit. To get them to come back for a second, of course. For all else, you've got to pay. What if I asked you nicely? Ask me nicely and I might play you for it. A round of cards? Let's play. If you lose, you give me the ribbon. Don't get your hopes up. None can best me at Gwent.
Rumpel. You're good at this. A word to one skiffin. The ribbon's yours. Now skedaddle. Tell me. What? What you want in return. I'm not doing this out of the kindness of your heart. Don't want anything in return. I... Hmm. Thank you. What is it you want? What have you got to sell exactly? Like I said, tobacco, fish tech, all sorts of things. Have a look. Wasting time here, Siana. Let's go. that? Because it wasn't about a princess. Tales about princesses are insufferable. Oh, the three little pig's homes. Well, you know the story, don't you? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Looks like Big Bad's already blown down the houses of straw and sticks. Brick's the only one left. We should look inside. Remember Joss's words? Mm-hmm. One bean lies out in the open, guarded by three nobodies. Yeah, that could be it. Oh, 
Butch, they do like that. Witcher huffed and puffed, and look, got a bean. It cannot be. What cannot be? You actually have a sense of humor. Stunted a bit, but yeah, it's there. Well, well, aren't you full of surprises? What else are you hiding behind that gruff exterior? Not a bad singer. Do a pretty mean rendition of the Maids of Vicovaro, for instance. But some other time, maybe. But here we are chatting away when there's work to do. We must keep looking. So, do you like it here? No. Got a problem with magic in general. Illusions, portals, all that. Don't trust any of it. A bow of old-fashioned tastes, eh? I like that. Doesn't seem to be at home. A feather, broken. It was a fight. My new attire reveals itself, but to the wise. A feather, broken. It was a fight. Goose feathers. Must have been flapping its wings. Or did it just get plucked? Watch out! Pixies! There, in the trees. Some kind of camp. The goose is ours! The golden eggs as well! I shall butcher you!
With my keeper in a cage, it's for free range birds are so much better. Oh well. Here it is. Got it. Good thing you posted that notice. Never would have found you otherwise. Oh look, she laid a golden egg for you. <laughs> <laughs> if only all my employers were that generous. Would have preferred a magic bean, but not about to complain. Did you really travel all the way here for a coffee? Nature of the job. I don't believe it. You must have had another reason. Hmm. Well, spent a few idyllic months in Beauclair some time past. Part of me wanted to come back, I think. Oh, yes. Visit to someone and you'll always long to return. Recognize it? Once upon a time, a terrible dragon attacked Vizima. It took a clever young cobbler to bring about its defeat. Right. Every now and again, some village idiot tries to imitate him. And I gotta come in to clean up the mess. Just one thing in its gut. A half-digested sheep. Stuffed with tar and sulfur. Of course. But no beam. Does that not disgust you, poking about in a rotting corpse? Compared to the time I fought a Zugel in Vizima's sewers, this... <laughs> never mind. Don't feel like telling that story again. Always grapple up her braids in the past, but I don't see it anywhere. We'll find another way up. This long locks tower? Indeed. It's even taller than I remember. Wait. What Joss said about the third beam, remember? In the possession of a bald farmhand somewhere deep beneath the ground. Yes, this must be it. Let's go. Watch out, pixies! Careful. It's not to be trusted. Hmm. 
Knight Strange. Doesn't look like he's out of any fairy tale I know. Wonder how he got here. In past times, Anorietta and I would occasionally run into them here. You see, knights errant far outnumber princesses in the real world, so some knights would sneak into the playroom, then into this land, in search of their fairy tale damsels. That's all. Only to be shredded to bits by a swarm of pixies. Man, he's delicious. That's one beam down. Good work. Hello? Can we talk? Shmoomach, my head! Damn it all! I swear that was the last time I drank with Redbeard. Oh, Siana, a bloody long time it's been. You've changed. Whereas you, not at all, big bad wolf. Though it seems you've started running with the wrong crowd. And who should I run with, eh? Thumbelina? One shot and she's under the table. But, 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 what brings you? You could always have a drink with us. Oh, what? No! Not on your life! I can barely stand, I'm so hungover! You know what they say about the hair of the dog? Out of the question! And why must you drink? Do you wish to drown some sorrow? And I don't mean to pry, but you don't look much like a young duchess to me. They stripped me off my title and birthright, then banished me. A family spat, let's say. Listen, looking for magic beans. Seen any? Mm, I was given one for safekeeping, but... Where is it? Talk! Shh, not so loud. Oh, I can be much louder than this. And resort to other means of persuasion. Ah, uh, right there, the threats. Siana to a T. Listen, I exist to restage a fairy tale. If you want to play at it, I'll be happy to oblige. But it won't be easy. The thing is, little red riding hoods popped her clogs. What? A thousand times they cut my gut open, filled it full of rocks and drowned me in the river. So once you stopped coming, I decided to repay the little imp for all her loving labor. Good now, what's at the bottom of the well, she and the hunter which means we can't play, and I'm under no obligation to talk to you. Not about beans, nor anything else. So leave me be. Sod off. Hmm. Wolf's pretty cranky. Surprised? Think about it. He was cast in the role of the nemesis without ever asking for it. 
It's a dog's life, I tell you. So, what now? Don't worry. I'll play with him. No, rather, play him. I just need that little red hood. A piece of apparel, that is. Not the poor girl's corpse. That's a relief. You wish to help me? Here's your chance. Jump in the well and fish it out. Well, chop chop. Any luck? Yep. Look what I got. That would never fit you. Give it to me. How do I look? Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go see the big bad wolf. Let me guess. You'll play the granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And you, the hunter. You again? I thought I was clear. I will not talk to you if little Red Riding Hood is not with you. Not a problem. Sianna can take her place. What? Very well. It's not as if I can forbid you. <laughs> Granddaughter, come closer, sweetie. But, Grandmama, what big eyes you have. They're better to see you, with my dear. Granny, what big arms you have. They're better to embrace you, with my dear. And, Grandmama, what big teeth you have, eh? The better to eat you with, my dear! I shall butcher you! Joss said about the red bee. A human has it, and he definitely didn't swallow it. Mm-hmm. Gotta open his belly. 
Bottle caps, fake teeth, a corkscrew. Ah, here it is. Red bean. Well then, one step closer to our goal. What? Now I find myself wondering if you're just horribly discreet, or if those mutations completely scrubbed away your curiosity. Are you really not interested in what happened? In what became of me after they cast me out? Well, since you brought it up, I'd gladly hear the rest. Let's see. They had escorted you out of the duchy. Yes. And the noble knights of Toussaint, I didn't stop until we reached the Ketdu wilderness. They left me there alone, without a copper, in a torn lace dress, right when the frosts were setting in. They assumed something would eat me, or that I'd do everyone a favor and die of hunger. But as always, I failed to live up to expectations. I wandered the woods for a week, went purple from the cold, gnawed the bark, from twigs. Finally, I saw a light among the trees. A campsite. They were bandits, bearded, drunk, spattered with blood. I was sure they'd rape me or kill me, or both. Take it neither happened? That's when I learned a robber and a murderer can be a better man than a knight in shining armor. They took me in, we set off for Nazaire, and I did what I could to repay them. I advanced in their ranks rather quickly, and eventually I became their leader of the whole ragged band. Should have stayed there, maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps I should have forgotten everything, started a new life. But you know what? There came a point when I thought, you wanted a monster. Then a monster you shall get. Been through a lot. I have. And throughout this time, my sister was stomping grapes and shagging minstrels on down bedding. She wasn't the one to banish you. And I'm not angry at her for that. I'm angry at her because she forgot about me. Right. We've had our chat. Come. From a tale about a wizard from off here. You might not know it. Three beds, three bowls. One a bit too big, the other too small, the third just right. Blonde curls. Rest of the body's too mutilated. Hard to say anything. She got what she deserved, as I see it. Always took what she wanted without asking. No being here. Gotta keep looking.
pull myself up here, and I'll have to make that jump. If you say so, I shall wait down here if it's all the same. Climbing stuff, my strong suit. <sighs> Prince's corpse. Tried to free Longlocks, but fell and broke his neck. way for nothing. So? Got the bean, but long locks. Hmm. Seems she got sick of waiting for a knight in shining armor. Can you blame her? Men these days, dandies and fops all. That why you cozied up to a vampire? Detlaf was a tool. 
and only a tool. Too bad he didn't know that. I trust no one. Learned that long ago. Now it's his turn. To use him. Was that your plan from the start? No. At first I was simply intrigued. Do you know the story? It was in Matina, a few years past. I'd gone there to pass some loot off to a fence I know. We were hashing out the terms when in walked Deadlock. He said he'd come to sell a silver candlestick. He gripped it through a cloth. That caught my eye. I followed him out, observed him from a distance, but he caught on quickly. Yeah, superhuman senses will do that. He turned down a blind alley. I followed. He jumped out from behind a crate, baring his teeth. I suppose he'd wanted to frighten me. Alas, he didn't in the least. After all, I'm a monster too, am I not? A higher vampire and you were unimpressed? Don't know if that's brave or just plain foolish. I've always had a way with ostensibly dangerous, quiet types. That's supposed to be about me, too? Oh, Mother, I hate to disappoint you, Geralt, but your belly button is not the center of the known world. Though, no, you do remind me of him a bit, stifling all emotions inside you, ever feigning indifference. You see, when I met Deadlove, I... Somehow I knew, call it intuition, that he meant me no harm, that he was trying to frighten me off, for he, too, was scared. Now, do you understand? I guess. What happened then? We talked, then met up once, twice, three times. Enough that he became infatuated. I truly enjoyed it at first, but only at first. He did not love like a man, but like an animal, madly, deeply, unconditionally, wildly. To return such a feeling, anyone would be hard-pressed. Let alone someone as twisted as I am. So there came a day you just up and disappeared? Yes. There was no other way. Let's just be friends, or I don't deserve you. He'd never have understood that sort of thing. But then, once I decided to return, clean up some old affairs, I remembered him and concluded he could still be of use. Playing with fire, that. Definitely. And either I'll get burned, or I'll burn all else down. No other options. Got a history with Detloff now. So this meeting will be different. Not afraid? I can handle him. Mm-hmm. Sure about that? You look at him as a witcher and see a monster. I... I know what he's really like. You needn't worry. It's time to go. Just a bit more work, and we'll be able to say sort off to this fecking fable sphere. Now we must plant them by the path near Longlock's tower, then prepare to meet the giant. Wait! Why? The stalk will sprout abruptly. Very abruptly. We must be careful. Alright! Toss them!
Something's always gotta go wrong. The home stretch. Admire the view later. First, we must deal with... Him. you this land had gone ape mad, though I did not expect it to be so severe. Can't help thinking you might have done that on purpose. Why ever would I have? To get rid of your guard, your captor. Getting close to the exit at this point, probably think you don't need me anymore. Well, you're wrong. You still stand to be quite useful to me. That's so? How? Plan to use me like you did Deadloff? No, I need you for a purpose for simple. Well, don't just stand there and stare. I need a man, Geralt, and I'm not afraid to say it. I have no idea what awaits me once we leave this place. Treat it as my last wish.
ways. No parting words. Did you wish to tell me something? Actually, that'd probably be best. Oh my. No woman's ever treated you this way. Not that I recall, no. In that case, at last you felt what so many women in this world feel at times. <sighs> I just hope this tale has a happy ending. For me, for you, for everyone. That may very well depend on you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing beyond what you heard. For now. Come. The exit's this way. Jump in the well. Another will of the wisp. Just curious. Why do you want the heart of Toussaint and the ducal wine? They were my right, my due. Doubt we would have figured you out if you hadn't tried to get them. Know that, don't you? I do. I regret nothing. One lives but once. Jump into the well. You first.
bottles in a fountain? Not terribly practical. It was a secret passage. Anariette and I would use it to... Hide from your governess. Which luckily she noted down in her diary. Thus I knew where to await you. Never mind that. Has the young lady agreed to help clean up the mess she's made? She has. And stop treating me as if I were a child. Would you prefer I treated you like the lying manipulator you are? Calm down, both of you. But... No buts. Let's go. Really want to be done with this. place isn't it offers a lovely view of the valley on a clear day you can see the outlines of dun time is it though a ruin like any other i think uh so sensitive so aware honestly what did declaf ever see in you perhaps he'll tell you himself Mm-hmm. It's always a bit nerve-wracking meeting an ex. Especially so when said ex is a vampire. I doubt he'll be in the mood for jests. I know. Ugh. May I be honest? Yes. I'm nervous. I really would prefer just to run off. I gave my word I would help, I know. But how much is that worth? Yet I owe him this meeting. And that is that. Let's get ready. Dadloff will be here any moment now. simple. I... Oh no. It's very simple. You either deceived me or not. In forgiving you, I grieve. For now, we must part.
didn't plan. Ah!
to me. Be gone. I can't let you. I insist. My, what a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Rather not bicker about taste. Don't like to. It's neither interesting nor productive. This particular Witcher has an inborn intolerance for formal occasions. Yet he's to attend just such an event shortly. I expect that's the source of his prickliness. So try not to take things personally, Master Taylor. Rather pity him. For in truth, stage fright overwhelms him. He trembles at the thought that he has no notion how to behave in the presence of Her Grace's Majesty. Hmm. As well he should. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else, which calls for lordly, Glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful. Pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Ceremonies. Medals honoring virtues. Just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue. Compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory, after all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victims' names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Hmm. 
Regis, Bootblack didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together, assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It lies in your hands now to see if you are able to present my handiwork at the ceremony with the dignity it is due. Or if you will first destroy it, crawling about the city's underbelly. Promise to be careful. The swordsman! Good to see you! Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. Step on up! Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then. I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the souls that wear them. Clean boots, clean souls. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough. I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young, got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. It was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Remember what they looked like? Of course. I have a mind like a steel trap, as I said. They were ragged, unshaved. Their clothes were tattered. As to their boots, well, I mentioned that already. Geralt. Allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that boot shine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. We must visit the shelter. Look around inside. 
Oh, a witcher. What a mincemeat. The Duchess summoned him. You. This is a decent... We need no filth folk bunning about. You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. The shelter. Them living here bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. Another defender of the poor. Fighter for justice. Damn nuisance. We for our women and young folk living next door. When even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. Come now! To Witcher! Try me! Are you well, my friend? What? What happened? Well, I saw your opponents gain the upper hand, so I took the liberty of jumping in. They shan't bother us anymore. We can now have a calm conversation with the proprietor. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh, wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. 
Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent meal elsewhere. So, almost all in the area eat here. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. My dears, I've a matter to address before I serve the soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. You were given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got one too. Uh, gave it to the boot black. And Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you, as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightening. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. This man helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time you will see to our Duquesa. It seems we underestimated Siana rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter has ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Siana planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtue's their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions, ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Siana murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn pension for evil? Yes, yes and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. But if you'd like to know for certain, you can always ask yourself. Actually, love to learn her motives. Praiseworthy, I suppose. Sometimes one should stare evil in the face. Seems a bit strong, no? She used my friend as her tool for killing. I believe I've every right to condemn her, but I support your lust for the truth. 
Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Lachey's Long. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions' rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind, but I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly, caused his death in the end, and now this, atop all that, no, Geralt. I will not go with you. I will await you at the cemetery.